My name's Lucas Cannon from Think Real Estate. With me today is Andrew Coulson. Hello, Andrew. Hello, Lucas. Today, we're going to go through the trust accounting project, well, at least one of them. Mm -hmm. And we have what in front of us is a month's worth of income and payments in and out of our trust account. So we're going to obviously provide some guidance in how we go through the month. Yeah. So let's look at what we had in the previous month, because we have a bit of information before we get to the 2nd of May, which is noted here. And we have a whole list of accounts here that we need to obviously carry forward from what happened in the previous month. How does that yeah. work? So what we're doing, we're saying, and this is following on from the previous month, you'll note that we've got 18,080 in the trust bank account. That is a debit because it is a total of all the individuals that we hold money for. They have credit balances in their account. So we've received money from them, whether it be for a sale or a deposit. Um, so the total of that adds up to our 18,080, which is uh, the balance in our trust bank account. Mm. So to be very clear, each individual account would add up to the debit or the total debit for our trust bank account. So you can see in some of the ledgers here, we have Melissa to Lynn. We know that's going to be a sale because the convention is whenever you're setting these, these trust accounts up is going to be from vendor to the purchaser. You're, you're transferring that land in their names. Other owners we have as just an individual one, they're more likely to be our landlords. That's correct. So if we've got a landlord, we usually have one account for each landlord. Mm -hmm. uh, if that landlord had other properties, you might like two blocks of units, mm -hmm. you might set up an account for each block of units. But each landlord traditionally gets their own unique identifying number mm -hmm. and you can see those down the left hand side of the page. Mm -hmm. So what we need to do before we start in and going through each individual receipt or payment throughout the month, we need to set these accounts up, don't we? Yes. I think it's gonna, gonna be a good idea if we look to do that together. Yes, I think so. All right, so what we have here is a number of different parts of our trust account. We have the chart of accounts, we have the cash book itself with a receipt side and a payment side. We also have a trust receipt or an example of a trust receipt and an example of a check, check butt. And we also have ledger cards. Now, we're gonna show you exactly what these, go, these mean throughout the entire part of this task. But first, the information that we have, we need to put in and set up. And we're gonna do so in our chart of accounts. This is basically a snapshot of who we owe money to within the trust account at any point in time. And in this particular case, it's going to be at the start of the month. So we know we are holding money on behalf of the, the trust bank account, and their account number is 700, and the amount is 18,080. We would continue to work our way down with Melissa to Lynn being the next one. And that's 710, and their balance is 7,700. And we would continue to work our way down because that is what would be happening throughout the start of the month. That's the snapshot, as I said, as a picture. What else do we need to do, Andrew? Of course, we've got a balance of 18,080 that carries forward from the month before. We're actually gonna carry that balance forward in the receipt side of the cash book. So our opening balance on the receipt side of the cash book will be as of the, uh, uh, the balance brought forward is 18,080. So we'll actually have a, uh, a now uh, an entry in the receipt side of the cash book for 18,080. Just there, so as we said, first of the month, it's called the balance that's brought down from the previous month. What we now need to do is make sure that every person that we have an entry for in our chart of accounts, they have a ledger. So what we're gonna do now is transfer the amount that's in our chart of accounts into a trust ledger for that particular person. So the first one we've dealt with is our trust bank account. So we will carry that forward, we'll give it a name, trust bank, of course our identifying number, number 700, and we're carrying forward a balance of 18,080. So now we have an entry in our chart of accounts, an entry in the receipt side of the cash book, and we also have an entry in a ledger. That's the first start we need to do. The second thing is we've listed in our chart of accounts, Melissa to Lynn. We're holding money in credit for them. So we've also got to set up a ledger for that account. So again, our next ledger card on that uh, assessment is going to list Melissa to Lynn, number 710. And again, we're carrying forward a balance of 7,700 as per Lucas's 
diagram. As we can see here, and we would continue to do this. We would work out our whole chart of accounts at that snapshot, and we would create a separate ledger card for each individual uh, account that we have listed there. And we would do the same thing, keep bringing that balance down so that the obviously the accounts have the correct amount in them. So before we actually start into looking at what transactions, we're actually going to have seven uh, accounts listed in our chart of accounts. We're going to have seven separate ledger cards and we're going to have that opening balance in the receipt side of the cash book of 18,080. Now we can get started in the assessment. So the first part of this task is that we are receiving a deposit. So whenever we receive any sort of money, it is going to be on the receipt side of the cash book. If we're ever paying any money out of the payment side, obviously that's going to go from the payment side. Now, really simple and really easy. Whenever you receive a money, you must provide a trust receipt. We must have a copy as well. Whenever we pay any money out, that obviously needs to be accompanied with a check but or an EFT payment with some sort of record of what money there's left our trust account at the very same time. So the first deposit is from? It's from a chap called Mr. Austin on he is purchasing a property from Harvey. So the first thing we need to do, because this is a new separate account, the first thing we would do is give a receipt. Uh, then we will mention after we've completed writing a receipt for Austin for $74,000, we'll then write that into the receipt side of the cash book so that we have a record of that money going in there. How much? $74,000. Now the thing that we notice in our cash book, there is something called an LF, the ledger folio. That number is the number taken from our chart of accounts. Our chart of accounts that we've already set up last month does not have an account for Harvey's sale to Austin. So we need to create a new entry in our chart of accounts, giving them number 770 and writing that Harvey to Austin into our chart of accounts. That ledger folio number is then recorded in both the receipt and the receipt side of the cash book. And after we've written something in our cash book, we now create a new ledger for Harvey to Austin with a credit that we've received for 74,000. So what we have here is the trust receipt. We know what the receipt number should be because it says it in our example. It says we need to carry it on. So Andrew, that is? 103. 103 is our receipt number. We've got a date, the amount, who's it received from, who's it received for, the property itself. It is 50 Park Street, Cogra. And what we also have then is, we haven't created a ledger here, but we know we will have needed to with the account number being 770. But we are now going to be able to put this in our receipt side of our cash book. So again, a lot of the details are mirrored here. So the second of the fifth, the receipt number is 103. The type is a check. We are receiving from Harvey on the account of Austin to Harvey, which we have created a new ledger. And the link forward number is going to be the link between this and our cash book itself. So that is going to then be 770. 70. The transaction is a deposit. The amount was 74,000. And now in the receipt side, you're also going to have an extra column saying bank. So if there were more than one transactions in that day, you would keep the date the same and put the new transaction in and then accumulate what the deposit, what was put into the bank at that one point. In this particular case, there's only one transaction on the day. So we all we have to do is simply put $74,000 just there. The second part of that transaction is to invest the deposit with the bank. You'll note out, uh, it says that we made special arrangements for the cheque to be cleared. And now we're going to draw a cheque out of our trust account and give it to our investment bank and invest that money. The interest that we earn will be divided between both parties. So again, if we're going to draw money out of our cheque account, we need to draw a cheque. So your first task here will be to draw a cheque to the investment bank of your choice for the amount of 74000 So 
This is an interesting situation and one of the more difficult ones. Because our trust account doesn't earn interest, they're asking us to put it into an account that does. So we're bringing it in on the same day and also coming out on the same day. Now, in real life situation, more than likely there might be a couple of days difference for the money to actually hit our trust account and then to be invested. But in this particular scenario, we're gonna say it's the same day. So what we're going to do is write a check but here on the state that's, that's noted down here, the second of the fifth, it's gonna be payable to a bank. So perhaps it's the Commonwealth Bank of Australia, which I've noted down here, CBA. The purpose is going to be that we're going to be investing the deposit. The property, as we know, is 50 Park Street in Cogra. Uh, the account is going to be Austin to Harvey, and the amount is $74,000, obviously. Now, the check number, or it could be the EFT number, in this case, it's the check number, it's going to start at 709. Now, we know this because that's what the instructions are. Our last check at the end of last month would have been 708, so now we need to start from 709. Now we have a record or that check, but it also then needs to go into our cash book on the payment side. So as you can see here, the date being the second of the fifth, the check number 709 is there. The payee is CBA or the Commonwealth Bank. And again, all these details are just transferred here. It's on the account of Austin to Harvey. The, the ledger folio is 770, which as we know, that was the account we created, the very next one. And the transaction is we're investing the deposit for $74,000. So as you can see, it's come in, we've receipted it. It's in our cash side, it's in our receipt side. It's come out with a check butt. It's gone out on the payment side as well. Then what we need to do is make that exact same reference within the ledger that we would have created, okay? So money would have come in as a credit and then money would have gone out as a debit on the exact same day in this example. The important thing that you need to keep in mind here is for every receipt, there must be an entry in the receipt side of the cash book and then a credit in the ledger. Then if you're gonna make a payment, you'll be drawing a check then follow through that to the payment side of the cash book and then a debit in their ledger. Make sure you step through those three processes. Many people do one and then go on to the next transaction. As a result, the books won't balance. The next transaction that we're going to do is a receipt from a tenant uh, for a property owned by, L by T Oaks on behalf of the tenant, Tracy. What we need to do here is obviously write the receipt and then after the receipt goes to the receipt side. Oaks is an owner who already has a ledger number. So we will have set up a ledger card for them. You'll enter that credit into that account. The next transaction is a tenant moving into a property. Now here we note that the bond is made payable to the bond board. In a similar way today, a tenant may pay the bond direct to the bond board via bonds online. If that is the case, we won't be receipting the bond. If it says that the cheque was made payable to us, then we will need to issue a receipt not only for the rent, but also for the bond paid, and then list two entries in the receipt, and the bond will be entered into the ledger of the rental bond suspense account number 760, because that's where we keep the bonds in that ledger account. So bonds can be a little bit tricky because some bonds might be paid directly to us as real estate agents or to the agency, I really should say. And if that was the case, we're gonna go through a similar process to when we received the deposit. We're gonna provide, we're gonna write out a trust receipt. We're gonna push it, put it in the receipt side of the cash book. And then we're also going to put it in that ledger number 760 called the rental bond suspense accounts. Okay, so the bonds are gonna go into that rental bond suspense account. If it was rent we were receiving, that is gonna go into that landlord's ledger. So very different, they're very diff two very, very different things there, the, the rent and the bond. However, sometimes the bond isn't written out to the agency. It might have been paid online, it may have been paid a check written directly to the rental bond board. If that's the case, we don't do anything because it doesn't come into our trust account. We might fill out the lodgement form with the check and just simply send it in. But we don't receipt it, we don't put it in the receipt side and we don't put it in the ledger. It is, it is not there whatsoever. It just depends on who the, whom the check may have been written to or who's received the money in the first place. As we then run through the transactions for the rest of the month, you'll see it's quite easy just to follow the receipting, 
the cash book, the ledger, for the number of transactions that we do. You may find a transaction such as settle the account with Lynn. What that's asking us to do is take our commission and also sending the balance of the money to the owner. So what we'll be doing there is doing two checks, one to XYZ Proprietary Limited and one to the owner. That will help you balance that account and hopefully that will leave you with a balance of nil. Or we might be asked to account to the bond board. In that order, we're going to be drawing our check, payment side of the cash book and debiting our ledger. So now that we've set up the trust accounts with each other, we hope that helps you in terms of getting through this month. So now you just need to go through in date order, what whether there's money coming in or whether there's coming out and you just need to do the simple steps. If it's money coming in, you need to have a trust receipt, it needs to be on the receipt side and you obviously need to put as a credit in the ledger. If there's money coming out, you need to do a check but, you need to go on the payment side and it's a debit in a ledger. So we hope that helps. Now we've entered all the receipts into the receipt side of the cash book and all our payments into the payment side of the cash book and we've listed all those entries into the respective ledgers. What we're going to do now is total those sides of the cash book and then do a balance called a trial balance. So add up all the deposits that you've made, all the payments that you have made and put a total at the bottom of those columns. Then we're going to start to create a trial balance. In our trial balance, we list all the ledger cards that we still hold money for. The ones that have ended up in a balance of nil or zero, we won't list them in the trial balance, only the ones that we have money for. So now you can start to list those entries into the trial balance. What we're going to do is we're going to add all of our receipts side here. So all of the receipts from the month, we're going to have a total. And on the payment side, we're going to have a total of all the payment side as well. So you just need to add all of these amounts down here. Then what we're going to do is put those, those figures into our trust bank ledger or our ledger card here. So we're going to have our balance brought down from the previous month. We're going to add all of the total receipts. We're going to take away all of the total payments and then we're going to have a balance carried forward. Now a carried forward means it's going to be taken into the next month. If that makes sense. We've already did that from the previous month when the balance was brought down. That was from the previous month. This balance carried forward is going to go to the next month. Then what we need to do is total all of our, of our ledger cards as well and work out what figure did they end on the end of the month itself. And we're going to put this into our trial balance, which is very similar to the chart of accounts itself. We're going to have a snapshot at the end of the month, what the trust bank account the total was, which is going to be a debit. And we're going to have each of our ledgers and what the total is is going to be a credit, particularly what money some of our accounts may have a zero figure at the end of the month. But whatever has money held in it needs to be here in our trial balance. Then what we're going to do is be able to equal them up. So you want to add all of the, all of the ledgers together. The trusted bank will come out to one figure and these figures need to be the exact same thing. That's how we know that our account is in balance and that the figures are correct. Having added those two amounts, hopefully your trial balance matches. So not only will we have our cash book match our trial balance, which will match our bank statement, the books are all in balance. What we now need to write, as per your learner guide, is a declaration as licensee in charge that you agree that these accounts are true and accurate as at the 31st of May, the end of the month. So we'd like you to write that declaration at the bottom of the trial balance so that you substantiate that these accounts are true and accurate. We trust that this has been of assistance to you. Please watch it over again if you do need to pick up some more points. I hope they have helped.